Good morning, good morning. Good morning. I had so many Zoom links to open up this morning. I didn't know which one was yours. Oh. It was a busy week. Okay, Hebra, vamos. With the help of Hashem, we are learning Shabbos Daf Kuf Yud Zayin. We left off on Daf Kuf Te Zayin, Ahmed Beis, after we had the Mishnah that spoke about the Heter of not only saving Kisvei HaKodesh, but even if the Kisvei HaKodesh is in a tick, it's in some sort of holder, one is allowed to save all of them from the fire. So in relation to that, we began quoting a Braisa, a Taner Abonon, the Negeya, the Karben Pesach, that may be brought even on Shabbos. In other words, when the 14th of Nisan is on Shabbos, we shech the Karben. However, we learned the Machloik as Tanoim as to how much of the hide may be flayed. The hide may be flayed. Aleph, flaying a hide, taking the skin of an animal is one of the Lamentes Molachs. Days for carbon Pesach. Carbon Pesach is considered carbon seabird enough that it is doiche Shabbos, which is like why you shecht it. However, you only are allowed to do that which you need to do. Now, you need to take out the fats from the carbon because the chalavim actually were burnt on the day it was slaughtered on Shabbos. So you, you have to flay the hides for sure until the chaze, until the chest. Then we have the machlekes tanoyim that uh, Rabbi Yishmol ben Aishol Abreichim and Mareika says, you can't flay it beyond the chaz. The Chachamim say, no, you can flay all of it. Now, we left off in the, what is the machlekes in between them? So first of all, there is a pasik that we quote, koil po'al Hashem l'ma'aneyu, from where we learned that when we do a mitzvah, we got to do it in a way that it adds to kovei shamayim. We have to do it in a way that it gives additional benefit for Hashem. And as the Gemara explained the Chachamim, if you were to flay it only until the chest, there's a certain bizoyim. It looks like it's laying like, like an avela. The meat, if you're going to wait to flay the rest of it only until the night, won't get enough wind. It might start to become less fresh. So for the Kavoy Shemayim, you can flay it all the way. Rabbi Shmuel Benoi agrees that there is a concept of doing things like Kavoy Shemayim. However, he argues that here, Yes, there is a Kovet Shemaim aspect, but there is also a personal benefit aspect. You want your meat that you're going to eat to be fresher. And this is such a classical example of where we have one action that is being done both in Hashem Shemaim and also for my own shame, also for me. Is it considered, is it included in the center of Kol Poil Hashem Lomaneu or not? This is where we left off. That was the Machlekes between Rabbi Shmuel, who's more stringent, it has to be pure, it has to be only Kavit Shemayim versus the Chachamim that hold that as long as there is also a Kavit Shemayim aspect, there is some Lima and Neo aspect, you got yourself a Heter. Now, what does that have to do with our Mesech the Shabbos? Because they brought, the Chachamim brought our Mishnah as a proof for their opinion. And we're going to repeat it in a moment before we give the rest of the, uh, the Chazara, that there is some link between the Mishnah and that case. We left off where that link did not make sense, and that's where we left off. We're going to continue to learn the back and forth that the Chachamim have with Rabbi Shmuel. We'll, we're going to be moving on later on Daf Kuf Yudzayin to further clarify the Machlekes and the Mishnah regarding the Mavoy 
mefulash or the mavi she'ena mefulash. Let's understand that this whole problem of saving items from a house that's burning, again, when there is no pikuach nefesh aspect, what's the problem over here? And l'chura, as we have been learning, one of the problems here, one of the problems here, is that you are taking it into an area that midrabbanan you may not carry. Which is why midrabbanan, to save kisvei kredish, they gave a hetan. What's the case of a, of what's a location where midrabbanan, so you are allowed to carry, midrabbanan, you're not allowed to carry. That was the mavoy mafulash, mavoy she'edan mafulash. So as we learned the daf, we're going to already lay down a couple of basic um, principles that we need to know to begin the sechtas eruvin regarding the physical enclosure of an area, the additional needed of a lechi or a koira. On top of that, there is a topic that we never spoke about yet, and that is that even if a place is properly enclosed, it needs to have a sheet of muvois. Question is, is our case of saving items from a fire speaking about a mavoi in which there was a sheet of done, or whether it is an area where the sheet of is not done? We're going to see that when we learn the Gemara. We're going to, God willing, learn on, go on to the next mission. The next mission is moving on from holy articles to food. And the Mishnah will put a limit. You may not save all the food in your house. We're going to learn in the Gemara why. Why is there a limit on food again? What is the issue? Especially since we're going to learn that the limit of carrying out food from the house isn't because you are carrying it into a location where rabbinically you can carry. Even if you have a chatzit, and even if there was a aid of chatzitis, there isn't even an isim with Rabbanon to carry from your house into the yard. Still, the Chachamim put a limit as to how much food you can salvage. Why would that be? Okay. That's going to lead us into the concept of Ha'arama. But you can take out food for three meals for one person. Well, can you invite guests quickly? Even though you know they're not really going to eat. So the food you take for them is really going to remain from you. That's called making a Ha'arama. Like making, who are you kidding? Do we make haramis? Do we not make haramis? Really, it originates in our in the tanoim. And once we speak about food, we're going to open up many daf of agadet, which is going to be awesome. Let's see how much we can get into today. We're going to be learning about lechem mishnah. Here is the famous machloikas: how many meals you have to have on Shabbos. Shitas the Tana Rebbe Chitka that says that you have to have four meals on Shabbos. By Yosem Lubavitch, we're yoyt to that for sure. People think that on Lubavitch, you don't have Shabbos Shudas. We have many meals on Shabbos. We have a Fabrengen. Some people have a Fabrengen before Mosev. Then they have another Fabrengen after Mosev. Every time you make a Mosevness, with a Bracha Achreina, we're going to learn about, all about these Shitas and a lot, a lot more, beginning where we left off. So again, we gave a quick intro about the Braisa in Psachim. We connected it to our Mishnah. The Gemara has a tradition, even though that the, the Tanur Rabbanon that we quoted didn't record the back and forth between the Chachamim and Amishwal B'nai Shal Reichem and Reika, but we know that there was some back and forth. And the back and forth that we suggested was our Mishnah. And the Gemara right away asked, how can you even tell me that the Chachamim were challenging Rabbi Shmuel from our Mishnah, bringing a Raya that what? Just like in our Mishnah, you are a lot of safe, a safer title with the tick, with the tick. And look, we have a tradition, not only can you save it with the tick, yeah. Um, why are you saving it? You're, you're, you're sa- there's some of it is a safer, right? Some of it is holy, and some of it is for you. The case is for you, Ki'ilu. And you can save them both. So therefore, you should be allowed to do an act of flaying all of the hide, even though you're also doing it for yourself, because you want your meat to be fresher. You also want to do it, that it should be more bachavadik, that Hashem's, uh, Hashem's animal shouldn't be laying like an avela. And the Gemara says, this could not have been what the Chachamim challenged Rabbi Shmuel with, because that's not a challenge at all. Because let's not forget that the issue in our Mishnah, that's where we left off. It's only a Mutzah issue. <clears throat> Masha Enkein, Masha Enkein, um, over there we're speaking about flaying. And flaying is an Isra Dair Isa. So how can you bring a Raya that when it comes to us being allowed to circumvent an Isra Dair Abanan, that doesn't prove that you can circumvent an Isra Dair Isa. That's where we left off. So we're two lines before the bottom of the Amit, Kuf Tezayin Amit Beis. So Amar Avashi, ah, the emesis is that that Tana Rabbanan in Psachim, that's Ravashi's suggestion, is not only an argument regarding whether you can flay all of the hide or not, they also argue about that. That's written the Fetish, but the Tarta game. they also argue with Tiltol. What's the Tiltol? They shechter the carbon Pesach. Once they flayed it until the chest, right now it's laying outdoors. It's laying in the uh, Azara. 
and let's say it's laying under where the sun is beating, are you allowed to move it? Can you move it? Forget about flaying it. Are you allowed to move it from the sun into the shade? Why would you not be allowed to move it, my friends? Because listen to this. Since the meat may not be eaten until the night, that's the rule. So therefore, if you can't have something right now, it's not for your usage for Shabbos. It's not muchan For Shabbos, it's muksa. So the meat is muksa. So they also argued whether you can move muksa or not. And this is indeed This is what the Chachamim told Rabbi Shmuel. That what? Imatzilintik hasefer. Imasefer. I, there is a muksa aspect. I don't care. The sefer is not muksa. So since you can move that, which is not muksa, even though together with it you're moving muksa, so zain. So here also learning taltal ur agav basar. This is mamish in great comparison. So now let's start today. Kufiyut zayin vayter says the gemara that cannot even be what the chachamim told Rabbi Shmuel because still midami. How can you compare one case to the other? Hasam over there, over there meaning our mishnah. In the case where you have a tick with that has in it a sefer. The tick is has in it a safer. So the rule is a basis is not muksa. The tick is not muksa. But over here, the hide is a base, has in it the meat. The meat we said until night is muksa. Actually, at night, good, until night is muksa. So therefore, even though on the Mishnah Lukula Alma you could take the tick Ima Sefer outside, has nothing to do with our case. This is such a strong response. It's not a response. It's a raya that this is not even what the Chachamim asked Rabbi Shmuel. Another suggestion of what the Chachamim challenged Rabbi Shmuel from our Mishnah that Im Matzilin Tik Im Shal Sefer Ima Sefer. Hold on. We know that the case of our Mishnah isn't only if it's a tick that has in it a safer, it's also referring to a scenario where inside this safer trader case there is also money in there. There is something that's also. When it tautal oil like Abbasar. Now the Havamin of the Gemara obviously is that even though we have a normal rule that when something is a basis, both Ludavar Hamutar and Ludavar Ha'asar, it's mutter. But you know what, my friends? Sometimes we only say that if they both have some sort of common value. However, what happens if the Dovar Ha'asar is a lot more valuable than the Dovar Hamutar? Now, this is really ironic because how can you argue that money should be more valuable than a safer Torah? But let's go with if there's a lot of money, there maybe the basis should remain also. Others learn pshat in the Gemara's Havamina that the Havamina is that if there is something that's a buses for both Mutter and Asr, for both, it should remain Asr. So Asr, Asr, still you're allowed to carry it. So they had a good, they had a good challenge on Abi Yishmol. And the Gemara says it's not a good challenge. And to the point Rabbi, that... Rabbi, how about a safer that you're not going to use on Shabbos, like a machzer? You don't need it on Shabbos. Safer, but don't forget, there's no machzer. We're only speaking about the times that machzer were not allowed to be written. Okay, we learned we learned yesterday, right? The non-positive words on people that write sedurim. This is. This I mean, one. I mean, a, 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 something that's tashmishik kedusha that you don't need for that Shabbos. Wouldn't that be muktza too? Okay, you could argue that, especially we learned that sedurim maybe not may not be read. Okay, to say that. Okay, so the Gemara says me dummy. The Gemara's answer, the Gemara's counter is well, no, that's not the case. The case where there was money in the tick and you can move it, that's because the safer could be used. The answer is it's a buses, and if something is a base for both, we spoke about you have trays under a leichter, and you put on it a becher, or you put on it a chitas, then you can move the tray. Which is why you are a lot of move all over here, when the flesh, when the meat is in the hide, all of the meat, all of the meat is mukta. None of it can be consumed until night. So again, what was the question that the Chachamim challenged Rabbi Shmuel? So another attempt, in the VM Tik, another case, even though this case is not written in the Mishnah, but we're taking it as a given that this is also the case of the Mishnah. There's a fire, and you have a safer, you have a scroll that's not in a container. Let's speak about a scenario where you are afraid of taking that out of the house 
because the fire might grab onto it before you get it out. So to protect the scroll, you want to put it in a container. The din is that if you have a container, even though the container has in it money, my friends, this container doesn't yet have any safer in it. You take that container with the money in it, you bring it towards your safer. That means that you are carrying it for a moment when the thick is only a bus is for Dabar Ha'asr. Even that you're allowed to do. If we am tik shiyesh with tikhim ois, ma'al ma'la hatl boi sefer toirom. And oi bazoi, so there is a moment that we gave a hetir in order to eventually save a sefer, right, to move mutza. So then a taltal oi ragav basar. At the end of the day, I get it. Don't forget, my friends, don't forget that this bus is kachim. It's holy. There's a mitzvah. There's an obligation to eat it that night. So saving the meat from it laying in the sun, well, well, it's not saving a safer title, but you're not stop saving a piece of meat. You're saving kachim. We should be we should be allowed to do it. And the Gemara says, hold on, if you look in the Mishnah, you never find such a case. So ask the Gemara, how do, how do you know? How do you know that you are allowed to move a tick that has money in it? So therefore, is it that you are extrapolating the written case of this machlekes, the written case of our Mishnah, no machlekes, is where there is a case that already has money in it. However, we, on, we think like this, why don't you have to turn the case over to make the money fall out before you run outside? No one says you have to do that. So since you don't have to take the money out, so in Muslim Zagin, that if when the fire, when you realize there is a fire, the scroll is not yet in the container. You want to you want to bring a container to it, even if there's money in it, you don't have to take the money out. Huh? You understand? Since no one says you have to take the money out when the money is in the container with the safer, so maybe I saw you now my sinon. So the Gemara says, no, why would you extrapolate that which is not written from the case that's written when one case has nothing to do with the other. Me dummy, hasam over here. If there's a fire burning, I appreciate the moment. And you have a case that has in it a safer trader and money. So the Mishnah doesn't obligate you to spend another moment to take the money out or to shake the money out. Of course not. Every second counts. You're running out. You're not going to stop to do something which will keep you in the house with the fire a moment longer. But hachi over here, in the case that you are adding, that you have a tick that only has money in it, and you are bringing the tick to the safer, as you are bringing the tick to the safer, as you're walking there, you can shake the money out. You're not adding anything new. You're not taking more time. As you are bringing the container, throw it out. And indeed, that will be the din. Because if, if you have enough time to get a container, to bring it to a safer, it's very different. Grabbing something in your house that's on fire and running out is one thing. Once you already have time to stay in your house and to start building things in your house, putting A into B, taking A to B, bachule, then there's enough time to shake the money out. And the Gemara is arguing, if there is money in the case, then indeed you would not be allowed to properly move the case. First, shake it out and only then take it to the safer. So there's no... So what are they bringing our Mishnah for? Ella the Gemara comes back that Omar Mar Barav Ashi Lo Oilon Kidamrinan May Kora that the Machloikis between the Chachamim and Abishmal Benoi is not Betalte. They never debated whether you can be Metalte. That was not what they debated. Bachlala. They only debated as we have it recorded in the Tonar Abanan. The question is, can you flay it? Can you not flay it? And on and and on that and on that the Chachamim brought our Mishnah, trying to prove that Abishmal that you are allowed to do something, even though there's also a covered, your personal benefit, dual benefit. But since there's also a benefit for Hashem, it's included in the heter of koil poil Hashem lamaneo. I, what was the kasha that we had? How can they bring our Mishnah? Our Mishnah is only speaking about the Isu de Rabbanan, carrying, a, it's Isu de Rabbanan. The Mishnah, in, the Braisa, the Din and Psachim is speaking about the, the being machshed oid as the Isu de That's more chomot. So now, guys, we have a few very difficult lines in the Gemara. Let's read it. Who told you that flaying the hide of the meat is an Isr Dair Isa? Well, who told you? It, well, that's a Mishnah Daf Ayin Gimel. That's the, 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 the
Ah, but hold on. In the Mishkan, why did they take the hide off the animal? Because they needed the hide for it to be used for the Mishkan, for the oil, for the Mechsei. They used the hide. Here, they we're speaking about a scenario that you're taking the hide off. You don't want the hide. You don't want the hide. Now, what, what would you call that if you don't want the hide? What would you call this? Is this a Dabr She'e Mishkan or is this a Malach She'e Nitzvich Alaguf? You're, you're flaying an animal. You're doing the act of a malacha. Elama, you're not doing it because you want to hide. You're taking it off because you want to meet. L'chura, this is a bona fide malacha she'en etzrich aluguf. L'chura. For some reason, it appears that some Rishonim learn, at least at this point, that this is called the davr she'en eschav. And that's a big problem. We'll have a few more moments. We'll speak it out in a moment. This is going to make Tzvika's questions a lot stronger now. Everything you're asking becomes highlighted over here in a, in a difficult way. So it's a Dabr She'eim Eschavin. So if it's a Dabr She'eim Eschavin over here, it's not a problem. But first of all, my friends, this is a super problem. Because if indeed it's a Dabr She'eim Eschavin, then why would Rabbi Shmuel say that you have to do it until the Chaz? A Dabr She'eim Eschavin, according to Rabbi Shimon, according to Rabbi Shimon, it's a mutter completely. So the Gemara counters, hold down. How can you tell me to love Rishayim Eschavin v'ha bayi v'dobi yorin tarvayu that moi did Rabshim epsikreshu v'lo yomus that that makes it into maite ne'isur doin aisa. So it doesn't help that you don't want. It's you're flaying the hide. So the Gemara says, no, 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 no. That the case here is the shakal lebe barze that you are removing the hide in very thin strips. You are removing the hide in a way that you are ruining the hide. So what? So what that you're ruining the hide? So let's go with Rashi. So Rashi writes over here that since ain derech hafshata bekach, the general rule, when you do any of the malachas in shaloi kedarkoi, that's not the way you flay a hide. You take it off. Why would you ruin the hide? If you take it off in a way that you make it into little shtikalach, and therefore you ruin it, since it's ain darkoi bekach, ain darkoi downgrades. All of the Moloch is from a Dairaisa violation to a Drabanan violation. Now, bottom line will be that Rabbi Kiva Eger has a big shtickle here. How, how, could, how is it even Shaykh to a Dover She'e Mishavit? And the bottom line is, is that this is Taka Moloch Hashem Yitzrich HaLaguf. It's Moloch Hashem Yitzrich HaLaguf, and this is only following Rabbi Shimon. Because according to Rabbi Hud, it's not going to help. But that's all the Chachamim. The Chachamim are old like Rabbi Shimon. Moloch Hashem Yitzrich HaLaguf. Melach Hashem is going to be an Isur, is, is an Isur de Rabbanan. And so they hold, yeah, there's an Isur de Rabbanan. But flaying the hide also is to God's advantage. It's Lema'aneyu, because Hashem's carbon is not laying like an Avela. Ah, you also benefit from it? This is a beautiful concept. So whenever you have an action that you're doing both for Hashem and for you, the Chachamim hold, we can coin it, we can put it under the umbrella of you're doing it for Hashem. And since you're doing it for Hashem, they were matir for you to violate what otherwise would have been a Isur de Rabbanim. Again, this is a very difficult question. We're going quick, but to appreciate the difficulty over here. I, I, I know you can argue if it's a Melacha She'en Etzvich HaLagufa, why do you even need the Shakalika Babaz? Why do you even need that? So why do you have to cut it into thin strips? Or maybe the fact that you cut it into thin strips is a raya, that's a proof that you don't want to hide. That's just an indication of why you, that, that's your intent. And since you don't want to hide, you only want to take it off. That's not just like digging a hole. You don't want the hole, you want to offer. That's the Mulach Hashem and Tzrich HaMagufa. And therefore, according to Rab Shimon, it goes down to an Isur de Rabbanon. So yes, so the link between our Mishnah which is carrying muksa, which is also an isur de rabbanon, if there is a muksa aspect, or carrying in a place, right, in a place where the rabbanon you may not carry, the rabbanon, the rabbanon, since you're doing it to save a safer kodesh, even though you're also benefiting from the tick, so like that, there's a dual benefit, a dual benefit. Okay, let's go on. Now the mitzvah, it's kilkal also. You're destroying it, and it's a malach shen You're doing two things. Uh, we're not, we're not, we're not, okay. The act of Kilkul Tzermach only explains why the cutting of the hide, Koireya, is also a Malacha. No, that's a Kilkul. But we're not speaking about the Koireya aspect, we're speaking about the flaying aspect. The flaying is not an act of Kilkul. 
It's good. But you're destroying it by making it into thin strips. You have no use for it now. That doesn't resolve at all the flame. The flame is flayed. Your, the the, 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 the half shot is good. It's an act of tikkun. I, I agree with you. Kilkul is only why there isn't another problem of koireya. You're not tearing the hide because you're being mechalkal the hide. Okay. Now, all of this, this is really the, this, this, these few lines, when it's learned properly, will be the big insight to better understand the criterion of a davr she'e meschaven, that's a psikresha. Is a davr meschaven she'e meschaven, why isn't that automatically a malachash in tzricha legufa? It's more or less what tzricha keeps on asking. This, this, this is a key. This is a key over here, but we'll move on. Okay. Now, the Mishnah is speaking about carrying it to where? So we learned in the Mishnah, machloikas. So the Chachamim said, Mefulash means that you can go through it open, not a non open Mavui. And then the Seder says, right, look at the Mishnah, Af, Af, no Mefulash. Now, it's time, Chaval Azman, a quick intro to Eidavin. Guys, always remember that when it comes to carrying on Shabbos, right, there are two issues that we have to address. First of all, it has to be physically a Rishus HaYachid. And as we keep on learning, a Rishus HaYachid does not not mean that it belongs to one individual. It's not private property. Nothing to do with private property. Rishus HaYachid means a place that's properly enclosed. It's four by four, and it has walls of ten tzvachim. On a biblical level, we're going to go at, at least in the beginning. Not like Rebbe Yehuda, that's more lenient. But according to everyone other than Rebbe Yehuda, a Rishus HaYachid, Midoraisa, is an area that is enclosed by three sides. And indeed, when you have a mavoi that's in that that's a you, it's a cold sack. That means it's closed off from three sides. It's only open in the place to which you go out to the Rishusarabim, where you come in from the Rishusarabim, Midoiraisa, it is considered the Rishusayachid. However, the Chachamim said, like we mentioned, since a person can erroneously walk from there into the Rishusarabim, because what's going to remind you that you're leaving your 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 private your street, you're going into the public affair, you gotta put a heker. And we're going to start with the shita that what's enough of a heket, either a lechi, one side post that's vertically on one of the sides, or one kaira, one cross beam that's laying horizontal. We're going to really learn there are many shitas about that. Now, my friends, there's another issue here that has to be spoken out. Even if you put the lechi and the kaira, you know what? Even if you have four walls in an area, nevertheless, Carrying from your home or from your chatzah into the mavoi is another Isr de Rabbana. Because the way the homes were laid out, the way the streets were laid out in the times of Chazalis, you had homes. A few homes used the same front chatzah. So one chatzah belonged to various homeowners. And various chatzahim went into the same mavoi. All of the chatzahim owned the mavoi. So here you have the issue with the Rabbanon, right, beginning with Shlema HaMelech, that how can you carry, let's say, from the Chatzar to the Mavoi? The Chatzar only belongs to Reuven, Shimon, and Levi. Right? They have homes in the Chatzar. But the Mavoi belongs not only to Reuven, Shimon, and Levi, it belongs to everyone else who has Chatzarim and Batim in that Mavoi. So it doesn't have the same ownership. And for that, you have to make a Shutfus. You have to have everyone that has a Chatzar going into the Mavoi to somehow halachically become equal owners in everything. Not only Shabbos, do they all own the Mavli, they also all own each other's Chatzayim. That act is called the Shit of Mavaris. Now we're going to speak soon, but our Mishnah is allowing you to carry the Sifri Kodesh. We're not only allowing you to take it out of the burning house, but the Mishnah is speaking about bringing it all the way into a Mavli. Be aware of that next Mishnah, I'll give you just a heads up, when the Mishnah is speaking about, can you save food from a burning house? The Mishnah doesn't mention the word Mavi at all. Who's speaking about Mavi? When you take something out of your house, you go into your Chatzah. And indeed, when it comes to food, you may not take it into a Mavi. You can only take it into your Chatzah. Like Yisrael Kodesh, you can take it even into the Mavi. Far away from the fire. So ultimately, the question will be, is this a Mavi that has a Shituf? Because if there is a Shituf Mavais, then why would it be that in the case of the food, why can you not take it into the Mavi? There's Bechlal no issue. Anything that's in your chatzah, if you made a proper shituf, you can take from the chatzah to the mavi. Oh, so l'chayra, the mavi does not have a shituf muva'is, but since it's kisvei kodesh, and you find it safer for it to go all the way away from the fire, you can even take it into the mavi. Hold that thought. Now we have a machlaikis, 
whether you can take it into a mavoi, the Chachamim say that's closed off, which makes a lot of sense because at least the Isur is only Midrabanan, right? The Isur is only Midrabanan. But Ben the Seder says, no, you can take it even into an open mavoi. Now, according to everyone other than Debbie Yehuda, a mavoi that's open on both ends is a bona fide Rishus Arabit. It's not a Rishus Ayachit. If it's not a Rishus Ayachit, hold on, how are you taking it in there? It's Asr Midoy Raisa. No one is allowing you to violate an Isur Doy Raisa, yet everything we keep on we're emphasizing is we're not the Isur de So here asks the Gemara, and because of that, it's a given that when Rabbi Yehuda, when Ben Beseda says, Afli foolish, he doesn't mean the foolish the way you normally mean it. Ben Beseda is not allowing you to take it into an open mavoi. So what does mufulish mean over here? So, so we're going to have various approaches. Listen to this. Everyone is speaking about a closed mavoi. It's closed from three sides. It's only open where it goes into the Rishul Sarab. And yeah, we keep on repeating, which this is the halacha, she does basilo, that all you need to do to be misak in it is to put a lechi or a koira. Really, it's a three-way machlek is tanoim. And there are those who hold one lechi is not enough. You have to put two side posts. Then it's properly closed. And that's the machlek in the Mishnah that the, the, the chachamim who hold were only allowing you to take it into a mavi she'enam a foolish. It means you can only take it into a mavi. Not only does the mavi have two or three mechitzes, but ushnei l'chaim, it has two side posts. That's mavi she'enam a foolish. If it only has one side post, that is what Ben Besed is referring to when he says you can even take it into a mafulash. Sholish mechitzes v'lechi yechad zeo mavi ya mafulash. Now hold on. Why would you bakal need to have two l'chayayim? So the Gemara reminds us that really the Tarmayu, it must be that both the Chachamim in our Mishnah and the Seda are following the Das Yachid of Rabbi Eliezer. And as we'll learn in the Mishnah, that Hechshir Mavoy, what do you need to do to be Machshir the Mavoy? We're not focusing on the Shitub aspect, we're speaking about the physical enclosing it aspect. Peshama Yomim, Lechi Vikoira. Ah, here's, you need a Lechi and a Koira, vertical and horizontal. Basil and we pass like Basil, either one lechi or a koira. Rabbi Eliezer says, Dafka tu lechayayim. So very good. So our Mishnah is following Shitas Rabbi Eliezer. So at least you can have what to talk about. Two versus one. Amalei Rabbi to Chizda can be because Shalosh Mechitza is the lechi echad mefulash. How can you call that mefulash? I get it, Rabbi Eliezer is makbid. You have to put, you got to put two lechis, okay? So if there's no two lechis, you're lacking in the lechi. But the word mefulash, whenever you're going to learn in the whole eight of it, a open alleyway, a closed alleyway, open means open from all sides. It doesn't fit with the words. Number one. Number two, if the Chachamim are emphasizing that the only reason why you are allowed to carry the Sifri Torah all the way, or the Stam, Sifri Torah, Nevi'im and Ksuvim, all the way into the Mavui, the Mavui is a bona fide Mavui. It has a lechi on both sides. Now, Rabbi Chiz, the, the Rabbi doesn't say these words, but the Gemara, you have to understand what's going on over here. If the Chachamim are emphasizing that for you to take it all the way into the Mavi, it has to be a proper Mavi, then it goes without saying the Mavi of our Mishnah also has a sheet of Mavois. But in other words, they're saying it has to have two lechis. You have to go like Rabbi Yezid. It has to be a perfectly kosher Mavi to carry in where there's no Easter that are So then, Lechore, the Mishnah is also speaking about a Mavi that has no, that, that has a Shitu. The fact that in the next Mishnah, we're going to learn about the hetar of taking the food only into the Chatzit, which implies you can take food out, but not into the Mavoi. It, 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 that must be that this series of Mishnahis are speaking about a Mavoi that has some sort of Easter. There's some sort of problem. Which is why for a safer Torah, you can overcome the problem. You can put the problem aside in honor of the safer, the the the, 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 the for food, you can't do that. But if the Chachamim mean that the Mavi has to be a perfect Mavi, then for sure there's a Shitu. If there's a Shitu, why can't you take the food in there? Elo Rabba, because of these questions, Rabba says another suggestion. It's an open alleyway. There's only a wall on opposite sides. It's open in one and it's open in the other end. Now, if you have such an open mavoi, where would you put a lechi? Each side has a lechi. 
shnei mechitzas or shnei lechoyayim. You have a lechi on each side. Zeu mavli she'enam afulash. That's a unopened mavli, which is good. Now, by the way, this is only das yachid. According to all of the opinions other than Abi Yehuda, if it's not closed by three mechitzas, it's not a rishos ayachid. But Rabbi Yehuda holds, we had this way before, that if you have two walls opposite each other in the Rishul Sarabim, in the area between the two walls, on a biblical level, you can carry. Eloma, again, the Yisrael the Rabbanon, that you have to make a hacker, you have to put two lechoyayim, and shtei mechitzis velechi echad, only one of the two open sides has the lechi, that's the mavoy hamafulash that Ben Besed is speaking about. And therefore, it must be that Vitar Bayu follows the sheet of Rabbi Yehuda, we're going from the Chamur to the Kal, the Tanya, that Yasser al Kain Amen of Yehuda, me, Sheesh, Mishtei, Batim, Mishtei, Tzidah, the Shusan Abim. Now, Yehuda holds, if there's two walls opposite each other, it's already not a Bible, it's already not a Shusan Abim. Me, Doir Ais, it's already a Shusan Yachit. Elama, you have to make a Heker, Oi, Se Lechi Mikan, the Lechi Mikan, Oi, Koyre Mikan, or Koyre Mikan. And once you do that, according to Rabbi Yehuda, even Midrabanan, when you make a Shitu, Rabbi, Rabbi, does Rabbi Yehuda hold like base pillow? Is that base pillow? No, 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 no. Rabbi Yehuda holds. Rabbi Yehuda doesn't hold the base pillow. Base pillow says you have to have a lechi and a koyer. Rabbi Yehuda doesn't even hold to Rabbi, Rabbi Yezid who says you need to have two lechoyayim that's on the same side. Rabbi Yehuda is of the sheet that even if the alleyway is open from both sides, it's already good. It's already a rishus ayachid midai raisa. Elama, you have to remember not to walk into the Rishul Sarabim. No, Rabbi Yehuda is really going together with Basilo. So put one lechi on each side. Oh. So Amulay, the Chachamim tell Rabbi Yehuda, your whole premise is wrong. If it's, if it's not closed on three sides, it's still a Rishul Sarabim. What's the bottom line is, we're going according to Rabbi Yehuda. But here we have the same issue. At least we explain the words, Mefulish, Vishayin, and Mefulish. Those words fit. But the second challenge we had in Abchizda is still standing. But your second kash is there. You who argue that our mission is following Rabbi Yehuda, and therefore the Mavi has a lechi on each side, which means that now, according to Rabbi Yehuda, there is no violation, not even rabbinic violation, carrying there. The Chura that must mean, again, that there was a sheet of done also. So again, if we are speaking about a, a Mavi, that according to our Tanoim, is a Mavi in which you are allowed to carry even on a rabbinic level, then why by food does the Mishnah not speak about a Mavui? Lididach, nami l'rabbana natsa l'toichai, oich l'ro maskin, and why again is the Mishnah that we're going to learn soon only speaking about taking it into the Chatzar, it should be allowed to be taken into the Mavui, and therefore guys turning to Daf, Kof Yud Zayin on the base, Ela, Omar Ravashi, the final explanation. Shaloish mechitza is v'lechi echad zehu Mavui she'ena mafulash. No, 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 no. One thing is clear, the Mishnah is speaking about a Mavi, my friends, in which they made no shituf. So Bechlal carrying there is a violation of the Rabbana. But because it's Kisvi Kodesh, they were matir. For food, they're not matir, because there's no shituf. Now, how do you touch the words of the foolish? The way you always touch it. We don't follow Rabbi Yehuda. It's a, it's a Mavi that is closed from three sides. Now, we follow Basilo. Good. You have to put on one lechi. That's what the Chachamim are saying. That, hey, you know what we allow? We allow you to carry Kisvei Kodesh even though there was no shit of no voice. That's already a leniency. But at least the physical enclosure has to be perfect. It has to be close from three sides. It has to have one lechi. When the Beseda says, Af, Enoi, even the foolish, the foolish doesn't mean it's open from both sides. This is the Valdik. lechi, if there's no lechi, Zeumavi yama foolish. Beautiful. So the, uh, uh, even there he's matir. But you know why he's matir? Because at least Mido Iraisa, it's closed from three sides. Mido Iraisa, you can carry there. So he's more lenient. Not only do you not need a shitu, in our case, you can carry even though there's no shitu, you can carry even though there's no lachi. And now the Gemara says, Vafilu, let Abi Eliezer, the Omar, the In and Lechoyayim. Even Abi Eliezer will be moida here. Hanamili, Lechlonu Mashkin. But again, the, the vart here will be is that there's no sheet of voice, which will explain the next Mishnah, that the next Mishnah is focusing on the issue of carrying out of a fire. 
But the next Mishnah is never going to allow you to carry it into the Mavui because this Mavui has some problem on some rabbinic level. The Mavui may not be carried into, and Taka for Muzzin, you can't. So now let's go on to the next Mishnah. Says the Mishnah Matzilin Muzzin Shalosh Suudis. So Brent Afayir, and guys, it's important to note that even the, that, that we're speaking about a scenario where there is no Pikuach Nefesh. I'm keep on emphasizing this, is because you can argue, again, I'm living here in, in Los Angeles. If there's a fire in someone's house, there's a pikuach nefesh aspect. Even though you can get everyone out, no problem. Fires are, are hard to control. Sabrenta fire. And, and, and the homes here, Baruch Hashem, are living in a beautiful uh, Chabad Sol neighborhood. Very nice, but still, there, you, uh, the fire can go from one house to the other. We're speaking about a case where there's no pikuach nefesh aspect. No pikuach nefesh aspect. And also, you see, there's enough time for you to salvage things. It means the fire still is very little. So the Mishnah says you can't take everything out of your house. Now, Mela before, we were speaking about taking something out into, the, into an area that Midrabbanon you cannot carry into. So we gave a hat there, Kisvi HaKoydish Our Mishnah clearly is going to be speaking about carrying out food from your house into your chatzir. We're speaking about a case where you made a proper aid of chatzeris. There is no rabbinic issue carrying. So the question will be, hold on. Okay, I can't put the fire out, but if I'm allowed to carry even Midrabanan from my house onto my front yard, why can't I salvage everything in my house as long as as long as I could? That will be the now we're gonna learn about the other issue. But the Mishnah is saying you cannot save everything. Let's put limitations. Matsilan wasn't shallow so this you can only save enough food for three meals, which for whom? If now, for each person, three meals. So let's say there are three people in the houses. Three meals for each one. Guys, it's, we're speaking about Shabbos. According to the Chachamim, if it's burning sh- Shabbos afternoon, I can't say for three meals. We'll see clear. The Chachamim are speaking about a scenario that if you didn't yet eat any of the meals of Shabbos, you still have to eat three meals. So say for all of the meals for Shabbos. And Haroi Lobahema Lobahema. And according to many of the Shainim, as we learned in Brachas Daf Mem, that if a person owns a pet or an animal, they're mechoyev to feed their animal before they eat. So that means if we eat on Shabbos three meals, so do our animals. So the same concept, you say for three meals for people and three meals for animals. And Kate said, let's clarify, it's not that no matter what time on Shabbos of Renta fire, I can say for three meals. No. Nafla the lake of Belele Shabbos, l'choyra, we'll see in the Gemara more details, before you ate, l'choyra, so that means you still have to eat three meals, then Matzilin Mazen Shalosh Shodas. But if the fire broke out on Shachas, you already ate the meal Friday night, there's only two meals left, then Taka Matzilin only for two meals. Likewise, if the fire broke out Mincha, then only Mazen Shodas. In other words, Shalosh Shodas, Lachachanim, is for the meals that you need to eat. However, Rabbi Yoisi is lenient, and he says, La'oyla Matzilin Mazen Shalosh Shodas. Even though it's already Shabbos afternoon, even though you only need for one more meal, no, they, they talk about a limitation, but the heter was three meals. Three meals per person. And now we're going to learn details. What is per person? It doesn't mean, my friends, per person in the house. If I'm going to decide when the fire begins to burn, I'm inviting my whole block. And therefore, for every person, I'm saving three meals. We're going to learn about that in the Gemara. That's called, that's the Ha'arama that we were speaking about. Okay. Now, Frek, the Gemara, I don't understand. Our Mishnah never spoke about taking it into the Mavu. You're taking it out of your house. And it's an even that you have a eight of Chatzedes. What? Why, why would they limit anything? Not so fame. Save as much as you could. Here we go. Here we go. Says the Amarava. This is human nature. A person goes into a state of panic when it comes to him protecting his property. He shot his sleigh. If you would allow the person to save, you can't put out the fire, but save and everything that you could. The person might inadvertently put out the fire. What is that shot? Guys, listen to the human, the way people work. If I am not told that there's any restriction in what I can save, so I'm going to go into a state, let's say, of rush, because the fire every moment gets bigger. Once a person is, is working with too much speed, you're rushing too much, you make mistakes. You make mistakes. Once a person knows I can't save everything, I can't, I'm limited on what I can save. 
So the rush is not that big. The pressure is not that big. Once a person is acting, you know, properly, the person will never forget that it's Shabbos. But when you go into a state of super rushing, things go off. That's Shad Bow. Not because you're concerned about your property, but if you go into a too overly rushed state, not well in life, even, even though even when there's a time pressure, once you start moving beyond what your speed, you're going to mess everything up. You will even forget that at Shabbos. You know the story of Rabbi Shmuel Munkis, his wife told him to buy eggs. He goes to the marketplace, he sees Hasidim going to the Rebbe. So he says, if they're going to the Rebbe, I'm not, I'm not going. He went on the wagon. He stayed by the Rebbe for many months. Many months. Finally, when he comes back, when he came back to his village, he remembered that his wife sent him to buy eggs. Oh, so he goes to the market, he buys eggs, but then he feels bad, it's so late. So he rushes home, he runs home, and he runs home in his haste, he trips and he falls, he falls in the broken eggs. So that was the Shalom Aleichem, his wife looks at him, and he looks up at his wife and he says, this is what happens when you rush. That's the word of, don't rush. Now there is a parallel b'raisa to our Mishnah, not about a fire, not about a fire, but something similar, that something is being lost, something is being ruined, and you have to salvage it on shops. What happens if you have a barrel, for example, of wine on your roof, and it broke. Now you have to chop the wine. So says the Braisa on Shabbos, maybe Kaili you can bring one Kaili and put it down, down in the courtyard. So it's going from the top story and you're chopping it. Only one, only one. But don't, in addition, have another Kaili. Now, where would you put the other Kaili? Guys, the broken Kaili is Mutsa, you're not moving it. So there's one stream. You know what you would do? You push it. If there's a stream over here and it's falling into this Kaylee, when this Kaylee is basically full or almost full, I can bring another Kaylee on top of it. Understand? But the Mishnah, the, the Baraisa says, you may not do it. Or another, another way of adding a Kaylee. Nor Kaylee Acher Vich Sarif. Kaylee Acher Vich Sarif means that bring another Kaylee on the same level. Like go up to the roof, and as the stream of wine begins to trickle down, hop it right there. Can't do that. You can only bring one Kaylee. Now the question is why? Mainly by the fire, you're telling me that if a person is going to feel that they can save everything, so they're going to start rushing. Once you start rushing, you, well, you lose the whole Seder. Over there, okay, you'll rush. What Seder? What are you going to do? There, you're not, you're not going to put out a fire. So the Gemara says, no, the same concept. That if I know that I can save all of my wine, I'm going to go into panic mode. And what might I do? I might get another Kaylee and carry it in the Rosh Hashanah. So Gufa Gemara says we learned about They're also Chazal limited how much of it can you save? Maybe Kaylee when he one Kaylee put under it, but only one, not two. Or Kaylee Achar Vitzdorif put another Kaylee hold it up in the air, put another Kaylee on the same on the same height of the roof. Okay. However, what happens if boom, I decided guests are coming for me Shabbos and the one Kaylee in which I'm saving wine won't be enough for my guest, then maybe Kaylee Acher Vekoilet or Kaylee Acher Metzorot. If I have guests, then I can save more. However, when I'm, sa- when I'm salvaging my wine, I can't say I will invite guests. No, 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 no. First, you got to invite guests, and then you close, and then you can save. And even though you're going to bring more kale, they allow you to do that. However, says the price of a ma'arim in bekach, who don't make a ha'arama. What would be the ha'arama? Guys, if you invite guests, that's not a ha'arama. You invite a guest. I'll tell you what the ha'arama is. You can invite a guest that you know the guest already had to the Shabbos. They're not going to drink a lot of wine. They're not going to drink a lot of wine. You're inviting a lot of guests, and be'em is the way that then anyway's not going to drink the wine. You can't do that. You can only save wine if you're talking by guests, and now you need more wine. However, Mishum, as long as you invited guests, even though you know the Emesis, they're not going to drink that much wine, almost all of it will be saved for you, but you invited the guests. So this is a, always a, this is a general question, whether we are allowed to make, so to say, a legal loophole. So says the Gemara Lema, this is the general Pluto of Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua Komitligi. The Tanya, this is the case of Harameh by the Tanoi. Guys, we have in Parshas Emoir a negative commandment. One is not allowed to shech. 
with all the details, the mother and the child, according to some, the father and the child, it doesn't matter which one you shecht it first, you have to know how to count the day, all the details. But on the same day, you can't shecht the oisai ve'ezbenoi. Now, what happens if oisai ve'ezbenoi fell into a pit on Yom Tov? Now, guys, a few things. An animal is mutz on Yom Tov. Alot. Beis. Oh, an animal that you intend to shecht on Yom Tov is not mutz because you can shecht it. But you can never shecht the mother and the child because you can't. So, so then one of them is mutz. So if an animal falls into a pit on Shabbos, you can't take it out. But if it falls on a Yom Tif, if it will be one animal, you can take it out. Because one animal, you can shecht. But here, you can't shecht both. So what do you do? So Rabbi Eliezer says, Mala es le Well, one you can take out, but you have to take it in ten to shecht it, because if not, it's mutzah. And the other one, you can't, sh- you, even if you want to, you can't shecht the second one, because you're going to shecht the first one. You can, you can bring food to it. The animal is mutzah. You don't let it die. You throw in there whatever it needs. Rabbi Yeshua says, no, 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 make harama. Malin is adishin amanas l'shachtoi. Bring up the first one. When you bring up the first one, you're bringing it up. Bekavona, I'm shachting this one. But you know what? The ain't a shachtoi. The taka don't shachtoi. Change your mind. Say, you know, I don't want this one. I want the other one looks nicer. Then you can bring up the other one. Right? Because once you changed your mind, if you didn't shacht the first, then you can still shacht the second. And then de facto, you're not bound by anything. You see that Rabbi Yeshua subscribes to these legal loopholes. So Lachura, this machlek is here, is similar to there. Says the Gemara Mimai, no, don't compare one with the other. I can argue both ways. Dilma Akan, like Omar Abeli Yazar Hasam, that you may not do Harama. You know why? Because the animals in the pit, as long as you feed them, they will not die. You're not losing anything. So therefore, don't make a harama. <coughs> You're not going to lose money anyway. But over here, by the wine, if you won't do harama, the wine that's not going to be received in another keli is going to be lost. So then no, it's maybe he will allow you to make harama. And the same thing in the reverse. So take the animal, you won't lose money, but the animals are in pain. But over here, wine, you lose wine. So I can argue that each tana can subscribe to the other side. So at least so now we have two prototypes and different scenarios for the concept of Ha'aramon. Okay. So now the Mishnah does allow you to save pass with Shalish Sa'uda. So let me ask you a question about Ha'aramon again. What happens if I save uh, food for three meals, food beginning with bread. I have two types of bread in my house. I have what Chazal deemed the best bread, not bleached, unbleached flour that was properly sifted. And then I have inferior bread, let's say whole wheat bread, barley bread, animal food, right? Today, what's chasher? What is, what is inferior? Can I say first whole wheat? And then say, oh, you know what? I changed my mind. I want to eat something better. I want to eat the uh, proper flour. So that, you're, that you are allowed to do. Says the, says the Braisim. But you can't go to the other way around. If you already saved the best bread that you have, Hitzel Pas Nakia, then any Matzel Pas Hadra'o. Hadra'o, <laughs> hadra'o means bread whose beauty was removed. Bread is that means that you, made, you left it whole grain. You left in it all of the stuff that are eaten by animals. No, you can't, you can't, that's not a harama, because people don't put aside something better for something inferior. But if first you are matzal, pas, hadra, then you have the right to say, you know what? No, 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 I'm not going to eat this. I'm going to eat a good bread. Matzal, pas, nikiyom. Very good. Another din, umatzilin, miyoyim, hakipurim, l'shabes. Right, and then, when the, before we had the fixed calendar, and you can have shabbat, you can have Yom Kippur on Friday, now it's burning on Yom Kippur. Yom, on Yom Kippur, you can't eat, but you need food for Shabbos. You are allowed to do that. Again, it's Muslim Shalosh Sudas. Aboloi, not the other way around, not from Shabbos to Yom Kippur. On Shabbos, in other words, if I, I already saved for the three meals for Shabbos. I already saved. So now I want to save another three meals for Yom Kippur. You can't, because on Yom Kippur, you don't eat. I, you'll need food, Matzah Yom Kippur, and on Matzah Yom Kippur, go get food. All this, again, is as long as a person knows that they can't save everything, they're not going to rush that much. The moment you take away the rush, 
people don't forget that it's Shabbos, they'll never come to put out the fire. The answer of Chloimer, that, that what, me Shabbos, Liyamtif, that you could save from Shabbos, no, 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 that you cannot save from Shabbos to Yamtif. You cannot say from Shabbos to Yamtif. I, I hold on, you need food for Yamtif. Okay, but my friends, we can prepare food on Yamtif for Yamtif. That's it. It's going to burn. You can bake new food for Yamtif on Yamtif. That's why you may not save. And the boy Shabbos, and certainly not from Shabbos this week, the Shabbos next week, because in the week you have enough time to make more food. Let's go bite it. Shachach pas Guys, we had this way early in the Masechta. The way they would bake bread in the times of Chazal is that they would stick the bread, the pita, in the inner walls of the oven. Are you allowed to take the bread off on Shabbos? That's called the Ridiya Sapas. So here we're going to have one of the many times the concept of Uvda de Choyl. There are many levels of the Rabbanan. You have Mutze, you have what we call a Shvus. Huh? Uvda de Choyl is not as stark. It's like Vachadik. The Dia Sapas is also because of Uvda de Choyl. That's going to be our sugi over here. So we're not, we're not saying you are allowed to do it, but it's a, the Rabbanan on a weaker level. We learned in Abraham, it's a Shachach Pas Betanon, if you forgot the bread in the oven, and the Kiddush Allah Yoyim, the Kiddush Allah Yoyim, not that you made Kiddush, it means the day became holy, that's it. Today that means that it, it's Ben Hashemashois, Matzil and Mazen Shalosh Saudis, the same concept. If you were speaking about a person who without the bread that's still stuck in the walls of the oven, they won't have a Mazen, they won't have a meal. You can say four or three meals, and then, same concept of guests, tell other people, go about see Allah. Because you're not inviting them to be your guest, but you're telling other people, listen, I cannot take more of it. So basically, whoever wants to take bread should come and take bread. We're not speaking about the carrying aspect. So let's say the oven is in the chatzir, so there's no issue for the b'nei chatzirim, there's a eid of chatzirim, in a case where there's no issue other than removing it. And now furthermore, even when you remove for your three meals, ukushuhu raida, Right, it means taking it down. Don't take it down with the keli that the bakers used. They had a special keli called the mirda that they removed the bed. Ella, this I can take it down with a knife, which is ashalaikadarkoi. So ask the Gemara Amy for how tiny the Rabbi Shmuel. When it says in that Sadas Adib Rosh Loi Sasid Kol Melacha, the Torah terms that Lama test Melacha is with work. That's a tkiya shayfun that excludes an isur midaraisa blowing the shayfun. Or and the dias apas taking down the pas from an oven that is a chachma ve'enu malach. So the chayda over there, it's certainly not an iser de'iraisa. So the question is, if it's not an iser de'iraisa, why do you have to make a shinoi? Right? Normally a shinoi is done when you got an iser de'iraisa to take it down a notch and you don't have any food. So the gemara says it's taken on an iser de'iraisa. It's not even called a shvus, but it's called a uvda de'chayil. It's, take, it's a, it's a chachma how to take it down, but it's a weekday activity. So even when it comes to a rabbinic prohibition on the level of uvda dechayil, even that, kama the efshel shanuye mishaninon. I want to give you a practical example today of uvda dechayil. You know, we live in a city that there's a good eruv. We're, we're machmer, right? But but the eruv al piyalach is a good eruv. But the eruv you cannot go with the uh, with these with these little kids. They go on these um, two blade. Scooters, you can use a scooter on Shabbos outdoors. That's a that's a classical uvda de choil. It's uvda de choil. It's vachadik. You don't do that. And you see how people sadly are a little bit le- lenient in that. And the Hanami. It says ah, it, it's not it's not it's not a mukse, it's not a shvus, but it's uvda de choil. And in our case, where you don't have food other than it, even there, kamo, the afshalushanuye, yeah, I gotta make some sort of deviation. Omar Rabchizda. A person should be involved themselves in buying food for Shabbos early Friday morning. Right before davening, you may not do anything. Friday morning, you can go to the market before you daven. That's Yashkim Adam Loitzah Shabbos. There's actually many shuvas written, contemporary. What happens if I'm going to the supermarket Friday morning, buying food for Shabbos before daven? Once I'm there, I want to buy food for the weekday. Can you do that or not? That's going back to the first sugi we learned today. It's Kavit Shemayim, but now you're also doing it for yourself. Anyways, people say yeah, people say not. 
but the, the, the mitzvah of preparing food for Shabbos is so strong by Yashkem Adam. And Shnei as it says, and Parshas Bishalach by the Mano that Vahoya by Yom Hashishu Vechino Es Hashem Yovim. And since the Torah juxtaposes the words Hechino and Yovim, that means that they brought in Friday morning Mano for two days. But if you were not a tzaddik, if you were not a tzaddik, you needed to prepare the Mano. When did they prepare the Mano for Shabbos? Right after they brought it in, Smichus. Is that I uh, that from early Friday morning? You should get ready for Shabbos. There's a beautiful minute that many people have is that Friday morning they put on the white Shabbos uh, tishtachet. They put the Shabbos, they put the, the um, table cover, the white table, it has to be white, it says on Shulchan Aruch. For Shabbos, so you bring in Shabbos early on. And let's hop on a few lines. That Omar Ab Abom, the Shabbos, Chayv Adam Lutzoy Al Shteib Kikores, on Shabbos, you are obligated to break, to break two loaves of bread, right? Going back again to Bishalach to the Mano, because it says in Bishalach the words Lechem Mishnah, double portion. Amar Amashi, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, you need a double portion. But however, you don't have to break both breads. You only have to have two breads when you make the bracha. He was holding two when he made the bracha. But he only broke, he only broke one. Just to know that it says in the Zoyar that even though normally the right is always before the left, and the right goes over the left. When we make hamoitzi, we always cut the right challah. But Friday night, when you put the two challahs together, right, you don't put them side by side mamish, but you put the right one a little bit under the left one. And you cut the one that's under. That's Friday night. Shabbos day, Shabbos, after, Shabbos afternoon, on the umptive night and day, the right always goes above the left. But we, as we subscribe to this concept of that you only you have to have two. Eloma, you only caught one. I'm gonna stop over here. I just want to add one thing over here, which is that there's a big question, as we'll get into the whole sugi of Shalashudas the next daf, whether you need to have two breads, even even Shalashudas. Why why would you think not? So how cup Friday morning we had a double portion. So instead of you having for two meals, two, Friday morning it fell four. Okay, good. So Friday morning when you ate, you had four. So when you entered Shabbos, how many portions did you have? Three. Three as in a two. So Friday night, they had three. We have to have at least two. Shabbos morning in the desert, they had two portions. So Lecha Mishnah. But in the Midbar, when it came to Shabbos afternoon, how many did they have left? Only one. So therefore, there's a machlaikis, whether you need to have Lecha Mishnah for Shalom Shudas, or maybe for there, you don't need to have the double portion, God willing to be continued. All right, guys, the next two daf is mamish amazing, amazing. The biggest sugis, and we're going to get into Yosef Mecha Shabbos even later. It's exciting stuff. Thank you, Go ahead, guys.